So based on what I've seen around social media lately, the interest in custom GameCube controllers seems to almost be at an all-time high. However, as the demand for custom GameCube controllers continues to rise, one problem still remains constant, and that is pricing. The amount of money that'll take to turn your controller from something that looks like this to something that looks like this. Finding a GameCube controller for a good competitive price these days itself is pretty hard, but even after you obtain the controller, you're going to have to spend more money if you want to customize your shells, your cables, or your buttons. Talking about buttons in particular, most custom button sets cost around $20 these days. Of course, them all being very high quality buttons that are molded and created with precision. But one thing always struck me as odd, and that is unlike Xbox and PlayStation controllers, which always had a ton of generic button options available on eBay, for very cheap, I was not able to find the same options for GameCube controllers for a very long time. Buttons that are most likely mass produced in China and sold for very, very cheap prices. It was not until a friend directed me to a specific listing that I was able to find these. On eBay now, if you search for them, you'll be able to find an entire set of custom buttons, including triggers and control sticks, for one-tenth of the price that you'll pay for premium custom buttons. I got multiple sets that I want to try out, and if they even come close to being as good as premium custom buttons, at their price point, these could be amazing. So without further ado, let's see how good these are. Now before I begin, I should tell you that I got five different sets of buttons, including the one that's already on the controller, from four different sellers. One listing had both the white and the blue set for $2. One listing had the purple buttons for $2. Another listing had the red set for $2. This set was the outlier, costing around $10. All the sets I got were from different sellers, and all of the sellers came from China with the exception of this pink button set. The pink button's coming from an American seller. Now I wanted to buy different sets from different sellers just out of curiosity to see if the buttons came from different moldings from different manufacturers. But as it turns out, they are all the same. In fact, they all come in the same exact bag with a barcode except for the one that came from the US. Now the strange thing about the US seller is, aside from having more expensive button sets, it was the only seller that had a different variety of colors from the rest. All of these buttons came just around the same time. The shipping is pretty fast from each seller. It took just around a week, despite all these buttons coming from China. So let's see what you get inside each bag. Now the amount that you're getting for what you're paying is pretty good. You get one set of triggers, an entire regular button set, two control sticks, a D-pad, and a Z-button. All of which very, very closely resemble their official Nintendo counterparts. Down to the little details such as holes for the trigger stops and places to insert your trigger braces. If you're able to tell, the moldings on these are actually also very, very clean. They are almost, almost one-to-one -one with their official Nintendo counterparts. So much so that, out of curiosity, I went ahead and I tried to measure each one and compared them to the button sets from an actual Nintendo controller. And for the most part, they are very, very similar, but they are not as exact as I thought they would be. It might be slightly hard to tell, but these buttons and control sticks are definitely much flatter than the round buttons that you would get on an official button set. I also took into account the width of the control stick and compared it to that of an original stick. Now, of course, what's important about this is if you have a thinner or a thicker control stick width, it could possibly restrict the movement of your analog stick. The width of the fake sticks, however, come out actually thinner than that of an actual stick. But at least through light testing of shield drops on a UCF setup, everything was still working fine. In the looks department, they're pretty good, but of course they just don't stand out as much as other buttons would. If you're looking for just a simple splash of color on your controller, these are a great option. All I would say is that the craftsmanship and detail on a real premium button will be far better than what you're getting with this. The amount of color selection is also pretty limited. What you're seeing here is pretty much what you're going to get for around $2. Again, if you want to spend more money and get more color options, you can go with an American seller. All of the button colors available are unopaque. The only one that is kind of see-through is, like I said, the clear one, which isn't super crystal clear. It's more of a grayish clear, and it was sold out when I was looking to buy these. They come in and out of stock, but if you're looking for a clear button set, that is the only option, unfortunately, you'll be able to get. So enough talk about what they look like. How do they perform? Here I have a controller assembled with all of the buttons, and if you'll notice, all of them are present except for the Z button. Here is that Z button, and if you recall before when I said that they are molded very closely to an original button set, but just not perfectly, the Z button is the only button that I found it did not actually fit on a controller shell. I found that every time I tried to insert the Z button in any which way, no matter how hard I tried to cram it in, there would always be a small gap between the controller shell and the button, 
Whereas with an official Z button, there is no such thing. You could really try to jam the Z button in, but by doing that, you actually compromise the feel of it and the button gets stuck. So unless I'm doing something completely wrong, unfortunately the Z button does not seem compatible with official GameCube controller shells, but it is the only button that is not compatible, as the rest of the buttons and the control sticks and the triggers all work pretty good. Unlike what you'll find with a lot of cheap control stick replacements, this one is actually the right height and clicks all the way through without needing any additional adjustment. The C stick is the same way. The D-pad is just about as good as the original, as well as the start button, but you really can't mess those up. I have to say, I am very impressed with the triggers. They kind of felt a little grindy at first. But after playing around with this controller a lot, just testing it out, they eventually smoothed out and now they feel really great. Plus, as stated before, they are a near one-to-one -one mold with the original trigger, so things like trigger braces and trigger plugs will be compatible with these. The buttons also work perfectly. They are the same height that you'll find with any newer generation controllers. So they'll be compatible with just about every controller that you have. In fact, these buttons actually fit better in the controller shell as they don't wiggle around like you'll find with Battle Beaver buttons. The buttons wiggling around don't affect performance, but if the buttons wiggling around did actually bother you, you won't find that with these replacements. Okay, so that was mostly all the good that you'll find with these buttons. Of course, there is a big con with the Z button not fitting properly, but aside from that, there aren't too many bad things that I can really rag on. My only gripe with these buttons is more of a personal thing, and that is that I found with all the buttons and the control sticks, they are all very flat. If you look really closely on these control sticks, you'll find that this is much more domed at the top, while this control stick runs more flat. This is common again with all the buttons and the control stick. Some people actually might like this feel, but personally it just kind of bothers me. But really it would probably be something that I could get over very quickly with just a bit of practice. And I didn't feel that when I was playing my buttons were messing me up or they never snagged, they never got stuck, they never really did anything. Besides feel a little bit weird due to their flatness. Installation of the buttons is very easy if you watch my video on how to open up a GameCube controller. I go through each part that you'll need in order to replace all of your current parts with these replacement parts. At the end of the day, I really have to actually recommend these. If you're a Smash player or even a collector of GameCube controllers and you're always kind of holding off on getting these more high-end aesthetic replacements at what should be a tenth of the price if you go to the right listing and with free shipping, I honestly don't think that you can go wrong with these. The flat buttons might bother you like it bothered me for a little bit, but like I said, I feel that it's something you can easily get over. If you're looking to add a splash of color on your GameCube controller and you don't necessarily want to break the bank, and if the luxuries that you would get with premium buttons don't matter to you as much, for the amount that you're saving, I think it's pretty worth it. Technically, these buttons do nothing wrong. They're molded very, very well. Again, they almost feel like one-to-one -one counterparts, and they offer a new world of customization options for those who previously couldn't afford them. Now, like I said, I bought from four different listings from four different sellers, and they all had the same color options. In fact, clear was actually sold out for each one of them, so they're obviously getting them from the same manufacturer. I would definitely recommend to go for the $2 ones. If you're gonna spend around $10, you might as well take the extra step forward or backwards and either save the money or get super premium buttons. Because for what you're paying, you'll be able to get the same thing for much, much less. The best deal goes for the two pack, which are a set of white and blue buttons that you can get for $2 as in $2 total, as in each of these are a dollar. If you want other color options, you can go for the $2 buttons, such as the purple set, the red set, and even the blue and white set, but individually, as well as, of course, the clear set, given that it's in stock. All right, guys, I hope this gave you a pretty good insight on what these buttons are all about. I hope this video was useful and that you were able to take something away from it. If you did and you enjoyed, please consider liking the video and subscribing. Now that summer's rolled around and college is done for now, I'll be able to make a lot more content around GameCube controllers and Super Smash Bros. Melee. I feel it's gonna be a very exciting year. I'm hopefully gonna be very closely working with my friends at Smash Studios as well as Rutgers Esports. So if you like esports content, especially Smash Bros. content, please consider subscribing to them as well. All right guys, thank you for watching. This has been Zenith, signing out.